What do you make of the BHP story? Clearly, we're moving closer to this demerger. Um, clearly, the market likes it, but there are some commentators out there who say this is not the way for this company to go. Yeah, inevitably, that particular strategic move is, is going to raise questions. But I think it's probably more reflective of the fact that one of the things that, uh, commodity price aside, one of the reasons for the volatility of this sector over the last couple of years um, has been financial mismanagement. I don't mean that in, a, in an underhand way, obviously. Rather, that the uh, mining sector needs uh, needed to very much uh, get its house in order uh, in terms of getting the balance sheet stronger. We've, we've obviously seen some m and activity in the sector. Uh, which has given it some froth. We've also seen a, an increase in the amount of share buybacks and indeed dividends. So any extraction, further extraction of value for the mining companies, uh, we could we could potentially see this BHP ability move being the thin end of the wedge. Okay. So all right. So wh what else do you so what are the what, what else do you like in the sector? Well, the, probably the favourite at the moment in terms of the general market view has, has got to be Rio. Uh, that's one that's got such a, a global diversification, let alone its product range, the, the, the minerals and ores that it's mining. Um, and it's, of course, got that, uh, that very strong balance sheet as well. And that, that, that is a company that is particularly cash generative. Um, and in terms of, as I say, in terms of the general view, probably the, the pick of the sector. All right. Um, another sector I want to look at is construction and property. Um, you know, we, we've had some pretty decent earnings. Uh, dividend yields look, look pretty decent as well. Is it a sector you like? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's had a, a very good couple of days. It's been somewhat unloved uh, over, the last, uh, over the last year or so. And, of course, at this particular moment in time, investors are chasing value as well as yield. Uh, and the perception is that you can currently get both of those in a sector which is going to continue uh, to be underpinned by loose monetary policy uh, for some significant time potentially um, and where they're, they're not looking especially overpriced. So in terms of the risers board today um, and indeed yesterday we've, we've had the likes of uh, land securities and British land being particular beneficiaries. What's your take on the general support for the equity markets despite the the, the rather shaky economic data we've had? It, I mean is, your, is, it, is it that the data isn't actually as bad as people think, or is it because this means we're going to see continued expansionary policy from central banks? The latter, I believe. It, we're, we're getting back to the stage we had earlier in the year uh, in terms of uh, market sentiment. The bad news is good news. The bad news being some fairly weak economic data, as we've seen this week, from various pockets around the globe. The good news being is that the implication coming up off the back of that is that uh, continued or even further monetary stimulus might be on the cards. Mm. That's supportive for equities. What's undone us slightly this year, of course, is the geopolitical concerns in the background. If you look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's only up 0.8% for the year, despite having hit that peak earlier on. And indeed, the FTSE 100 is down 0.3%, despite uh, the strength of the, the rally we've seen today. So there's certainly no valuation concerns happening because companies are coming up the, with their side of the yeah, bargain. Yeah. But clearly, it's the geopolitical issues at the moment which is pegging us back.